How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I want to test drive this beast, the Navistar 5000 MV There's a couple of reasons I wanted to do it, one, I used this for a pretty big chunk of my actual playthrough and uh, I didn't get it for about a day or two and then, uh, but once I did, yeah, I did use it quite a lot, I put a, quite a bit of money into it and stuff and uh, I've not used it for a while since doing all the reviews and that, so I was curious to know where it stands compared to the rest. But yeah, also to like let you know my opinion on it, like is it worth paying real money for and how does it handle on that? Because obviously it's one thing to spend in in-game money, but spending real money is a uh, yeah different matter. So uh, first thing is the engine. Uh, I got like the miracle of military engineer. As soon as I read the word power, I was like, "Yep, <laughs> that'll do." It's like one notch off full, but it's not S plus like on top of that. Uh, gearbox high range. The suspension it does raise it a little bit, not loads, but I think it's already pretty decent anyway. Uh, obviously, the main thing with suspension it usually lets you uh, have bigger tires. Somebody said yesterday. Uh, that you can get the bigger tyres on the Voron Grad even without the race suspension which is pretty interesting uh, yeah you can't get any single like rear tyres on this but uh, that's it's I don't know it's the sort of doesn't really suit the truck I reckon anyway if it could so I'm fine with the uh, jewels on this uh, the winch yeah I've got the top one I had to raid a few other trucks to get it but <laughs> we got there the spare wheel I quite like that it sits on the back of the cab um, the crane you can have the crane, the saddle high and the saddle low, but you can't have like the crane and a saddle. So when I was running it like that through my playthrough, I'd have a four slot trailer. And for a good while, like a lot of the missions were no more than four anyway, so it wasn't really that bad. Uh, as for snorkels, like they're the stock ones, and then you've got a choice between these two. I tell you, in real life, that would be dangerous for me. I'd be like, oh, I wonder what happens if I put my hand on there. Next thing, I'll be fucking in the, in the air filter. Uh, yeah, I'm going for that one. Like it, I reckon it is a tiny bit taller. I don't know. Well, yeah, it looks it like by the time the water will actually get in it. You can't have any different exhaust, which is a shame because it smokes like an absolute beast. These are like the two window. When you get it, sort of as you get it, it's got the uh, mesh across the front windows. You're better off changing it to those sidebars, really, just because it takes the mesh off the windows so you can actually see where you're going <laughs> better in an interior view uh, you can't take the rear mud flaps off as, as for the front bumpers that's the stock bumper those little bits that stick out at the front are like they're just very narrow so I don't think they'll make a lot of difference that bar at the bottom sits lower that top bumper is basically the best that's the one I had on anyway when I didn't even think of checking that but I quite like the look of it it's got the winch on the front the winch rope dangles down but that doesn't do anything yeah that second bumper I quite like but that bar along the bottom just lowers the nose to where it'll catch more basically uh, these are all just different things like you see all them black boxes on the roof they're like LED lights so it's a bit like the fog lights but yeah a bit different and then yeah a couple of different sun visors uh, two sets of alloys so not a lot to choose from and as for the paint schemes, there's all the usual stuff. And I really couldn't uh, choose, to be honest. I was um and ah in between black and the other. I think it's sort of grey, but it sort of looks, yeah, closer to black. The white. This I quite like that camo. Like, I don't dislike any of these, really. That's the one I'm going to keep on it. That's the one I had through my playthrough. I think it quite suits this truck in like a bit of a darker colour. Uh, yeah, they, like these camos, I don't like hate them or anything sort of remind me of like an old Age of Empires map I nearly went for that one, I did a bit of testing in that one but yeah I just in the end I went back for that like I say I was having a look at the sort of black and grey and white I think it's a very good looking truck though so um, yeah we'll take a look at it outside so it sits pretty nice and high for like especially that it looks more like a classic not classic as an old, but you know, like a, just a typical American highway truck rather than like something that's purpose built to go off road. I know that like a Navistar is like a bit of a military contractor, I think, and they build stuff for the army, so it's obviously been beefed up, but yeah, I do like the look of it. Uh, inside, plenty of buttons to press. I still would like to know what that red button is because I wish there was an option to press it. I can't really see the rear view mirror, there's a bed in there, so you can have a wank halfway through your mission yeah like I can't see the mirror through those bars 
there's no window in the back either so no one can watch you um, looking out that mirror again it's like there's bars in the way I can just see the edges of the tires but it's close like it's not the best view out the back to be honest oh, my god apologies for the horn it's so crap I could make a louder noise by putting a sausage in a sock and hitting a bag of feathers like what the hell is that doing on an actual truck I'd be disappointed if that was on the TUZ 166 um, yeah horns crap <laughs> it takes a while to fire the engine up but look at the uh, rev thing climb which was like I never really looked before but yeah it's like an a Lexus LFA rev counter so uh, yeah it's pretty snappy on that but we'll get setting off you can stick it in high as long as like obviously if you're going up a steep hill and that you'd have to wait a bit longer but yeah it gets in high does a little bit of a drift to help the steering not as much as like the Voron does or the Voron Grad as for ground clearance they're all looking very good but then you notice that trailer's about as near as makes no difference just sat as it should be which means this is one of like rear ground clearance anyway it's uh, pretty decent like, it does sit reasonably high because I think it was the Cat CT680 with a collapsed rear suspension was basically the trailer was like halfway in the ground as you can see <laughs> this is why it's called the Stevie Wonder because yeah you wonder where the hell you're going like you just you hit things you're like what the hell was that start looking around but it's too late <laughs> Every every mission is an adventure because you, you even you don't know what you're doing. But yeah, along it, I like how like it's got a nice rush of power when you put it in high gear, and it uh, motors through quite a lot of stuff considering. And uh, yeah, it's doing alright in high gear there. Like I can say now for a fact, it's not uh, it's not as good as like a fully upgraded Tega etc. But again, because it's more like a highway truck chassis to begin with it's like it was sort of never going to be but it's uh yeah we'll we'll check it out like it's nice motors up there it makes nice progress which i like i mean as i said this is what i drove a lot at the beginning apart from like the first day or so but so i suppose this set my baseline of like how fast i like to go the steering angle on it isn't amazing again you get used to moving the camera to the side like this so i just started killing some trees. I already killed the other ones we'll, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. It knocked two trees down and then stopped on the third one which I'm alright with that like there's definitely it's usually one if I can knock one down then they don't interrupt my journey that much if I uh, steer in a bit late whatever. Got through there pretty nicely. Obviously on this you've got all wheel drive that's always on but you've got no diffs or anything which is kind of one of the reasons why I wouldn't necessarily recommend uh, off-road gearbox. If you're doing like some very off-roady, you know, hilly climbs and that, yeah, fair enough. Like, but um, yeah, because I like, I'm not going to gain the diffs by putting it in low. I like to keep it in high or auto as much as I can. And suspension-wise, you've seen it take the odd little bit, but it's uh, it's never really been an issue for me. Like by the time I've usually smashed the suspension. Uh, I've run out of fuel and all sorts like this thing by the way I don't normally mention fuel too much because it's kind of like how long's a piece of string I know some have got smaller fuel tanks but it's like what engine are you using what tyres what map are you on what cargo are you pulling what trailer have you got on like there's so many different variables but I can tell you with this military engine it goes above 30 litres a minute quite often but you see you can't just drive in along and it's like what the fuck with that Oh yeah, anti-terrorist barricades. <laughs> it passed. I just didn't know. Um, funny, it reminds me, years ago, I was driving along and I didn't have my bumper on the car <laughs> for various reasons. And uh, this copper pulled me and he was alright, mardy bastard. Even the other copper with him was kind of like, you could just tell <laughs> they didn't get along that well. And uh, it's like the joke that got away because I, to be honest, I invented and blamed a badger for my missing bumper. I was like, yep, seems like a reasonable thing to blame. Um, hoping that, you know, if he thinks a badger maliciously ran out of the hedge to ruin my bumper, he might <laughs> might go a bit easy on me. 
So yeah, I said uh, I hit a badger, and he said where, and I almost said like, oh, I don't know, in the sort of chest and neck area, I reckon. But yeah, I couldn't risk it because he was too much of a <laughs> too much of a mardy bastard. So I just yeah told him where I hit it. Like say, still still reminisce about that one. That's the one that got away. As for this thing, goes through here. Uh, like it's slow, but it doesn't particularly feel like uncomfortable or like it's just going to stop any second but it is pretty slow I will uh, say that because it's not got the diffs like diffs would help a lot right now but I have been through here quite a lot especially because I did my playthrough with this and uh, obviously it's this is fully upgraded raised suspension and etc etc so uh, yeah, if you go through there, like, unupgraded, it could well be a different story. That's one thing as well, it doesn't, um, like, when you're in first gear, auto, it doesn't go into high, very, if you're going along the road it'll do it, but yeah, when you're trying to pull out a mud and stuff, it, um, whereas, say, that Voron Grad, you can pretty much stick that in high, like, half a mile an hour and upwards and it'll either plough ahead or it'll just light the wheels up. See again this is like half the reason why I don't like trees because I can hardly bloody see the things and then it's like what the hell? <laughs> or like that and it stops me. It's like you bastard. I will return. See? Yeah two in a row. That was when I was trying out that camo. That tree stopped me. Then I just kept killing trees. Like this thing kills trees like a good one. Kills the big ones as well. Uh, which is nice to know. <laughs> it is for me, anyway. Like that, but that's a big one. That one to the right, and that, like, you know, that's like Bruce Leaf. <laughs> that's right, I went there. Um, yeah, snow test. Uh, this is like just another barrier thing. The snow test will be in a few seconds. Uh, I think it's pretty damn good through snow because it's got that punchy high gear. Like, yeah, it bites in just fine. I knocked it out of high gear there so it didn't die down or anything it just yeah I, did, I just if I hit the barrier and jump over it then I do that normally but obviously for this I want to see what catches and what doesn't see going over here like even though it's got quite a nice ground clearance it's fairly long between those two sets of wheels so what I like though one thing is the winch point it's got two winch points on either side of its roof which do come in handy a lot because if you tip in and you can grab something with the roof winch point it's extremely unlikely you're going to tip whereas sometimes you can grab a winch on like the bottom of a truck but it's still got enough like it doesn't need to pull the winch back far or anything just to tip over it's catching something here I think it could be the fuel tanks but underneath there is like a bit of a transfer case sort of thing sticking out where the prop shafts get fed from and I'm not sure if that also catches a little bit but again, this that particular bit of barrier is pretty high. As soon as I just move over a little bit, it gets over. So yeah, it's not the best truck for it, but I can definitely get over most uh, barriers without an issue, as and when I need to. See, again, I was in the high up there, or fairly close to tipping then. I'd say with the truck, it's not that bad for tipping, but because it's quite tall and relatively narrow for how tall it is... Um, yeah, like it's definitely not like the Tager with the custom muds on is bloody hard to flip, and uh, for it, yeah, like it's definitely not as not as good as that. Got up onto the rocks, see, beached itself there a bit, but as it rocked back, it gripped in enough to get me off there. With a the nose test, it slowed down a little bit. It had to bump itself over that rock, so again, it's like that's what I'd say with this truck. It's like pretty comfortable but it's clearly not the best like someone said a while ago that it was overpowered and it's like I really honestly don't agree like bearing in mind it's fully upgraded now and I have to put like 60 grand into it which when you're playing on your playthrough you don't just find 60 grand sat on the floor necessarily so unupgraded it really like considering you can find the Tager an hour after you start and stuff uh, yeah a fully upgraded Tager I think would eat this for breakfast but it jumped over that wall, which was pretty nice. Uh, and then 
it took a little bit of jiggling, but it pushed through these trees, which again, there's quite a lot of stuff that does struggle with this. Well, even the, even the A's of all sorts struggles, like them tree branches are no joke. And I have, obviously, I sort of left this in now recently, because it's I suppose it's pretty relevant. I've been bombing through a couple of forests and gaps where tree branches stop you, and if you've got a trailer behind you, it's like, oh no. Like, it's just not a good situation. <laughs> As for turning circle, it's definitely like not great. I was trying to, this is why it's quite nice to do the other tests, like, so I've got sort of something to measure it against. <laughs> um, I'd say it's about the same as the A's of Dolphin and the A's of John. It's like three point turn. Uh, yeah, I don't think it ain't going to get any better than that, really. Like, it's not a horrifically bad turning circle. Like, it, the A's of turning circle doesn't bother me, but. If I wanted to go on a tight, twisty track, I wouldn't take the A's of, and I probably wouldn't take this. Well, obviously, when I did my playthrough, I didn't really have much choice. See, interior-wise, you can't see a whole lot from the mirrors. <laughs> but it looks good while hauling, I think. Like I say, I really do like the look of it. I think it just looks like a... Like a good-looking American highway sort of truck that's, yeah, been beefed up with raised suspension and... Bigger chain tyres and stuff, but... Uh, yeah, I like it anyway. I can say so far, I definitely don't regret buying it. Like, I'm glad I've got it as a uh, just another toy to play around with. So, for one pound sixty nine, like, if it was five quid or something, I'd be like, definitely not. Like, say the calm thing you can get that I think is three quid if you don't have the season pass. I definitely wouldn't recommend that really, unless you're just not asked really about three quid and you want to have like the big mad tyres on it, but yeah, that's not very useful. This is like, the one thing I do like about this is when I first got it, it really wasn't that amazing, but it's like, it was good enough to get the job done with a little bit of effort and, you know, winching and blah blah blah, but as you upgrade it, it remains fairly competitive through, like, from the early game to the late game. Like, it still would struggle on some missions, but even some late game missions it'd handle. Um, yeah, so it's just nice that it actually stays relevant. By the way, I couldn't get it into high on that snow, which I couldn't with the A's of John. The Voron grad easily got into high there, but yeah, it just wouldn't quite do it. If I had the uh, off-road gearbox, obviously high range is a bit slower, it, it probably would have done that. As you say, I had a couple of, temp a couple of attempts through here, so... I just chose this one, I thought it was a bit cleaner in the end, I kept it in the high through here. One engine damage, that ain't going to worry me anytime soon. See, even those branches there, they hook a lot of trucks that I've tested and slow them down. This thing is pretty decent for just muscling its way past trees. And yeah, motoring along here, obviously I already know the steering's not rapid, so I'm kind of... Yeah, giving it an extra half a second, maybe blipping the throttle just to buy me that extra bit of time to turn it. But as I say, because I use this a lot at the beginning, I suppose this was kind of my benchmark. So when I got into stuff like the Tager, it's like, bloody hell, this thing turns like really fast compared to this. So it's like, bloody hell, so slow, I could probably have a wank before I get around this corner. Consider it. By the way, look at the uh, windscreen wipers. Like, what the hell are they? Like an eyelash came off or something. Uh, yeah, like, as I'm bouncing around, I can almost like not see the tyres. So I soon got bored, by the way, of <laughs> sitting there and like, that. Right, we're off. Yeah, look at them. Like they wouldn't wipe the steam off some spectacles, let alone. I mean, look, you can see lines in the window. It's like someone ain't telling the truth because they did not make them lines. Anyway, uh, horizon-wise, it, it's sort of roughly on the horizon. I wouldn't say it's bad, I wouldn't say it's amazing. But it certainly doesn't ever really bother you, unless you're going over the peak of a hill, but most things have their limit when you're going on that sort of angle anyway. See, it's just... That's what I always liked about it when I was using this. It's, it's just quite punchy, and it got on with it. Even if I end up slowing down a bit in the slower bits, I can handle that, because now I'm at a slower bit, and it's like, oh, I'll have a little play around in there or whatever, but, yeah, once I'm, like, on roads, it's sort of like, I've seen a snowy road, <laughs> I've been down it at 
you know, 10 mile an hour in low range and stuff, and it's like, now, I've seen it a hundred times, and I just want to get on with it. <laughs> it was the laziest effort ever from me. I went around the corner, my wheel dropped off, and I was like, well, <laughs> keep it pinned, fingers crossed. So, came back to try again. See, it was, though, the slightly slow steering angle, I didn't turn enough, and it was like, I just, yeah, like my wheel dropped off, and that was it. I put it in high for a second just back there. It, it caught its nose, but it didn't stop it. It like bounced over at the same time. So, like the ground clearance is fairly decent on it. Again, it's not the best, but it's uh, certainly not the worst. So even through there, a lot of things bogged down. This thing can stall in high range as well. So if it was really struggling there, even through that grey bush thing, it was. Uh, yeah, it's not dropped out of high or anything, which means it's like it's pretty comfortable at the minute. And obviously I knew there was uh, shallow patches of snow there. What I wanted to see is once I launch myself up to speed, does it keep its momentum? And again, this is like when I was doing my playthrough on the snowy maps, it just felt nice enough where it's like, yeah, as it's bursts of speed, like, it's not bad on snow, I have to say. I wouldn't say quite as... I think the Voron Grad was a little bit better. The Dolphin was better. But, yeah, it's definitely not terrible by any means. Like, the ANK is worse than this on snow. It's weird with the ANK, because it's got diffs and all sorts, but it just really does not go fast through snow at all. It just, no matter what you do, it's got the power and everything, but it's got the chain tyres, got the jewel rears, it's got diffs, but, yeah. It really does not enjoy snow. Or not fast, anyway. Uh, yeah, so I came into it. You can see I've got the uh, low range gearbox in at the minute because I was just trying some things out. So, like I say, I'm not, yeah, I'm not anti. To be honest, actually, funnily enough, this truck, I played like tens of hours, like 50 odd hours in low range gearboxes with this truck. I used low range more than high range when I was uh, playing my playthrough because obviously when something's fully upgraded, it can handle high range pretty. It can handle high range about as well as a non-upgraded truck can handle low range so it was like I use low range a lot more but yeah now I've got all the beefier trucks they just they're nice they're enjoyable in high range they can squeeze the most out of like that high gear and stuff so uh, I came back in the high gear basically uh, as you can see in front of me where that like patch is cut out that's where I made it to in the off-road and I was there for obviously longer than I left in this clip but when I came back in the hiring I can already guarantee you because I've done this loads of times with this truck anyway I'd drive in I'd get stuck at the exact same patch and because I've never really done it before on these videos I thought we'll just see when I just keep it pinned along the left and yeah I got like, I just drove along at that speed and got out just fine so that's the route obviously to take you wouldn't want to really drive in the middle of that bigger muddy bog devil's mud as some people have been calling it quite aptly named. You see there, too far over and it goes. Like I say, it definitely rolls easier than like this thing. You see, I have to bring the rescue truck. I always like bringing the Tager up in these mountains. Like the custom muds are really nice in deep snow anyway and obviously it helps the weight characteristics. All I did was flip this thing back up because it's got a winch point at the top of the roof it flips it over very easily like this doesn't dig in like this is maybe why I didn't really notice it for a while but yeah this is very easy to flip back because you can grab it from the roof and yeah that's just it does help a lot so it got beached there a couple of others have but yeah it to be honest I wouldn't particularly bring this for some serious awkward angle mountain climbing but uh, still, you'll see here, it's like, it's not bad for tipping. There is some weight in the cab, but there's definitely plenty in the chassis. It's more, if you carry the cab weight over, and it gets momentum, it could eventually go. But if you go in slowly, and you're in low range, and like you're not bouncing the suspension, you'll be surprised how far it leans over before, like, you even see here... It was pretty far over before it finally decided to tip rather than slide the back end, which you'll see in a minute. I'd say that's reasonably fair, though. Like, 
you can land on your tyres sometimes with it, but if it's carrying its like cab momentum, then yeah, it's going to carry on and fairly lightly lay on its side. But you see, like there, reversing a lot of truck, like the Royal would have gone there, especially when I just tapped the back of that tree. It would have uh, gone. So yeah, it's not shocking or anything. It's just again, it's not not the best for it. Going all down here, turning around that corner was fine, but I did have to do a three point turn. I didn't have to, obviously, I just decided to. Going up here, I put it in low there, and I just, because I just so happened to be like bridging that gap, I think those middle tyres ate a lot of the power. Even now, though, low was like not doing as well as I uh, would hope, but it's nice and punchy in auto, and because I don't have diffs, obviously, a lot of trucks like that's why they can get up there a bit easier, but. Yeah, it's very nice and punchy in the auto, and it goes up very steep hills pretty nicely in uh, first gear auto, so... I'd never really used low range a lot in this, even in the high range gearbox. So it gets up there fine. Now, this is some pretty decent lean. The Royal, the ANK, a lot of others would have long gone by then. But yeah, eventually. It's, uh, it's too much for it. So I just had one last go going up here. Again, I've been all over, like, explored all kinds of maps with this thing, so uh, I've probably got a good 100 hours in this truck alone, maybe even more. So I knew it'd get up here and that, but, um, yeah, I just wanted to see, like, what would happen when I get here. I knew I'd beach, so I'd have to turn sideways a bit. And, I mean, look, there, you'd definitely expect it to go, because the back end's slipping, because I'm keeping the power on. Uh, yeah, like I could have got away with it to a degree, obviously, eventually. Too much and she went. So, we're off to the uh, quarry. See, so, yeah, that's high gear again, just motoring. Obviously, it'd do the same even if you had the off-road gearbox, but the high range would obviously be a bit slower. But yeah, even through here, it just punches through quite nicely. One of the things this definitely benefited from was the raised suspension and the bigger tyres, though. Like, the smaller tyres don't even really look right on it anymore because they look too small but yeah I think like these are 49 inch tyres I think so they're only one inch smaller tyres than the uh, Azov Dolphin it's dropping me loaf off there it's usually where I bring them to and then drop them and if I need them I'll grab them uh, I haven't got a trailer this time just because to be honest I'm skin after buying that Voron I only had like a grand and a half left buying a Voron for the second time I might add um, yeah I didn't have a lot of money and I figured anyway I'll just drive down there and grab one of them trailers because every time I get here <laughs> I always go oh yeah I should have just grabbed one of them trailers like the Northport trailer collection is that's that's breached the limit now that's like it's gone from slight OCD to kind of now curiosity <laughs> of how it'll look when I've finished all the reviews. But yeah, this pile of trailers is a... Uh, I'm not as keen. If I could just delete the trailers, I would. I know I'd lose six grand or whatever, but... Yeah. <laughs> easy come, easy go. It got down that hill, by the way, pretty nicely. Uh, it didn't catch its nose or anything. Like, it doesn't catch its nose a whole lot, and if it does, it's almost like it's slightly under the truck, so it doesn't always just stop you dead. I like that I can just grab that stuff now and not have to stop properly. It's nice to just keep it floored if you can. Seeing all up through there, that's the auto. Like, it's not rapid, but it's pulling. Like, it honestly doesn't let me down that often like as long as you don't take the piss with it for what it is I mean I suppose it's similar to the uh, Cat CT680 I suppose the Freightliner like that M91 whatever the hell it is which I will review that soon by the way that possibly could have been tonight although I did want to review this as well but yeah after buying that Voron for the second time I really don't want to spend another night <laughs> doing cargo container runs to buy that freight liner, so I will save up the money for it, and I'll uh, I'll definitely review that pretty soon. 
someone mentioned it, and it is the picture on the SnowRunner game. So I was just checking the rev ranges. That's auto, and it goes to about 2,000. That's low range, and it goes to about 1,500. And high, it wouldn't... Well, it went down to 500, but it didn't actually stall, but usually it does when you just sat there, so... Uh, yeah, I just wanted to know, though, what the revs were. Now, I already knew pretty much what the answer was going to be here, because... I did, like, a month or so ago, maybe probably six odd weeks ago or whenever, I, uh, when I first found Quarry, really, I tried stuff like this pretty quickly with this. And funnily enough, yesterday, every now and then on a couple of the runs, or the day before, the Voron would, uh, see, I told you it feels just like yesterday, um, the Voron was basically, like, stopping here for a second, and then it'd build its revs a bit and start going again. This thing, I just couldn't, like, that rear tyre, if that got about half as close again to that rock it's closest to, I'd probably start driving up. There's just, whether it's the trailer or all of it together, it's usually about here is that last little lip you've got to beat, and after that it's, uh, usually then the truck will get up after that. But I tried it yeah, four or five times, like I said, I already knew the answer, but I wanted to give it a good old go, so, pop me loaf in its little loaf hole. And again, <laughs> like, life doesn't move. Just drags this beast up there. Obviously, in a second, I'm going to beach, yeah, about now. So, it's going to start pulling the loaf then, but I'm caught on the rocks, so... I could just park the loaf behind the trees, but obviously we've already been there, done that. <laughs> Got the t-shirt. And, uh, yeah, so, I, but I was able to wi winch to those trees from here. And I just went to, uh move the loaf out of the way and he's like what the hell Navistar what are you doing <laughs> starts flying down the hill on me so I had to try drive it up again and see at this point I just flung a winch out at the loaf that loaf got on the side uh, sorry the winch got on the side of the loaf and <laughs> look at it it's still digs in but I reckon a lot of scouts I would have just pulled over sideways then back over the hill and they would have come down with me but the old loaf it's professional he knows what he's doing when he's got his little loaf hole. And uh, yeah, I'm able, well, this time I actually moved the uh, loaf out of the way. I, the handbrake worked this time <laughs> on the Navistar. And uh, yeah, just flung a winch out, grabbed the tree. Again, is it just me or is the, have they slightly upped the distance on the advance winch on the trucks? Because... Unless I was just using stock winches and sort of got used to them more, but just a few times in the last week, I was like, oh, that, that did pretty well. That grabbed, like, over there that I didn't think it would. Uh, yeah, apart, once I got over that little, like, rock bit, uh, the thing drove up basically on its own power. So, yeah, it couldn't quite make it up there on its own, though. And I did give it a damn good few attempts, and I have before. But it wasn't far off, it got up the two, it walked up the first two quarry hills, so... That last hill is almost like... <laughs> showing off at that point, there ain't many trucks that do make it up there. So uh, yeah, I flew down here in auto. Again, it's like, who knows where I'm going. Stevie Wonder knows, but nobody else does. Got down there, they see again, it didn't catch its nose. Yep, I owed that trailer summit. Pissing me off early. I was trying to attach to one of them. Uh, yeah, kept it in high, drove up that hill, did a little wheelie. I had to drop it out of high eventually, but that's pretty decent. Oh, what's that a new trailer discovered? Like, Jesus Christ, do I look like I need more trailers? What I need is a trailer store discovered, <laughs> so I can go and take them back. Yeah, I seen my gap. I went for it. Things went a bit wrong. But, this is where you see the top um, winch point comes in handy. So because I can put it right on that top roof, stick it on that lamp post telegraph pole thing, I already knew that's, I had done that before with it. I knew I'd uh, pop myself back up like that. And that's where if you had it on like winch to the chassis, you might just drag yourself around for a while and it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. It glitched there, but don't worry. 
I was prepared. I did more than one jump. I had to uh, attempt attempt loaf rescue. See, this is why you get yourself a loaf. So he was just waiting. He was on cliff watch, and he's seen what happened. See there, how the steering's working. I was jiggling the steering like mad the whole way down because if if you're jiggling your steering, you can normally get the uh, steering still to work when you land on your side. And I am sat on a bit of an awkward rock, but yeah, there you go. Get yourself a loaf. And uh, I tipped this over sideways. But to be honest, it took literally seconds of it just sliding along on its side before I was like, right, I ain't even... I ain't even going to sit here for half an hour just spinning it around in circles. Bring the Vore on, did a Jeff special. Shattered a lot of it. <laughs> it's the first, well, one of the first time. I reckon I'm not landed on my wheels with the Vore on down there. But the uh, loaf soon, soon solved that problem, used it as a wedge. And yeah, see, because I can winch to the top roof, it's like just very nice for... Uh, tipping it once it goes and bites in obviously when I was winching it with a loaf it's doing that like driving again and it's just like I'm not even going there uh, drowning test the snorkels kind of, it's up to the roof but then I suppose the back of the cab gets a bit higher again uh, yeah it, go, it went in pretty decent it's not like as amazing as some things but it's uh, <laughs> that's definitely what she said it's yeah pretty decent and I actually give it a go down here like as long as you can keep the cab kind of fairly above the chassis. I know that seems kind of obvious, but I just mean it's not trying to pull itself over there like the Royal would have by then and some other stuff. But yeah, I actually made it down there. Like I've got a bit more used to how to get down there now, but it did it. So it's going for a drowning test. I was only aiming it that way because even though I already knew it couldn't swim or anything, like that's the direction when stuff swims it's sort of remains shallow enough that way that I can get to the island starts taking damage not a silly amount still pushing nicely through water even when it was fully drowned so that just lets me know if there was say a river bit that's a bit too deep and I'm going to take a bit of damage at least I know it's going to power through the water even if I got a trailer on yeah it's pretty light it is pretty decent for pulling power Nailed it. Landed that one. Engine just about survived. That's not my problem. That's one thing. You know when you fire it up, it does that beeping noise. Like, as you're rolling over, you definitely can't fire this engine up and uh, try and steer out of a roll if you're going to carry on. I just left this in because when you've got a pretty damaged engine, if you put it in low on the gearbox, then... You're just less likely to stall every two seconds. I, it still can happen. Obviously, I'm wading through fairly deep water now and whatever. But, um, yeah, just putting it in low just makes it happen less, which is sort of worth knowing if you're trying to limp back home or you've just not got far to go with your cargo. So, basically, in conclusion, personally, I like it. And I'm glad I bought it. Like I so said, I bought it. I did about a day or so, and I used the CK and blah blah blah. I've I pre-ordered the game, but for whatever reason, I didn't get it. It's like I can't even be asked writing an email and stuff in the time it takes to write an email. I could just earn one pound sixty-nine, so I was like, I'm just going to buy it. I ain't even going to worry about it. But uh, yeah, I'm glad I did buy it. It's to me, it was worth one pound sixty-nine, and I suppose there's another thing. I, I wouldn't really suggest it. And obviously, PC you can mod the money in all sorts, but when I eventually got it near the beginning, I could have just sold it for a hundred and forty odd grand, and then I would have been, you know, level two or whatever by the time you get to the Black River Garage. But I would have had like a hundred and sixty odd grand by then, and I could still sell the GMC blah blah blah, the uh, Kodiak or the Fleet Star. So yeah, I would have had well over two hundred grand at level two. And uh, like I say, it's definitely. It isn't as good as it is when you haven't got it all upgraded, so the lesser engine, obviously the balance gearbox, no suspension, a stock winch, smaller tyres, like it's definitely, when someone said it was overpowered, it was like, I really, really don't agree, especially not, I didn't even really know about the Tager back then either, but 
Uh, yeah, I don't think it is at all, but I think it's still decent enough that it's a fun little toy. I believe on PC, either it's they added it just as a mod or somebody just modded it. So I believe on PC you can get it for free now anyway, which like I'm I'm cool with that. I, to be honest, I'd prefer that because it just means more people can have it. I don't really care that I paid one sixty nine for it. Like I, I had it on about day two really, but um, yeah. I had access to it when I wanted it. I was happy paying my money. I'm not going to worry that it's now potentially free to some people. But um, yeah, but, like good luck to you. Enjoy it. Uh, yeah, 140 odd grand. So it's a good old chunk of money if you didn't want it. It's almost a bit like you could imagine it as like a one-time microtransaction. Not that I'm suggesting that at all. But I'm just saying if I didn't like it, I knew I'd get 140 grand out of it. Uh, fully upgraded. It's 191 grand. And I was thinking, is that possibly the most expensive truck because I think the Derry was 186 well actually the uh, the Voron Grad that's currently set me back about 260 grand <laughs> to drive that but at least it is pretty damn good um, yeah so that that's my conclusion like if you're already quite far through the game and stuff I certainly wouldn't say you need it or anything there's like there is stuff that's better than this that's just all there is to it but I'm glad of that because it would have bothered me if it was a bit pay to win because it's like oh, now you've just made it easy mode like even though it is better than say the fleet star or the gmc blah 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 but yeah it's definitely not like taiga and voron levels or the dolphin and so on obviously nothing's the level of the loaf um yeah but i just i don't know i don't regret buying it it was a fun toy to have it's got its moments it's got nice pulling high gear and yeah i had a good old time with it to be honest and like I say, I like how, as long as I put the money into it, like, the engine alone was 24 grand, and that was pretty dear to buy when I was back playing the game, but as long as I put the money into it, I like how it remained competitive, or reasonably competitive, through throughout my playthrough, and even now, at the end, like I say, I still enjoy taking it out for a little blast every now and then. I've, obviously, I've been doing reviews and all sorts, so I've not been out as much as I normally would, but yeah, it's just... I don't regret getting it and if you're early game and you definitely just want to get a truck that will get on and get doing a lot of stuff I'd suggest getting it like as, as you know bearing in mind £1.69 like there's times when I can't spare £1.69 but I could at the minute and it was a uh, yeah I think it's worth grabbing it's a good little toy to add to the collection and I like the fact that it's like a proper truck truck rather than not that I dislike the way like the Tagers and all that are but yeah I just like that it's a pretty classic American highway truck sort of thing so uh, yeah I'd recommend trying it or if you're on PC see if you can get it free as a mod which is pretty cool that they do mods because they kind of shot themselves in the foot for adding like DLC trucks but in a good way obviously for us lot because mods are free basically uh, yeah I accidentally knocked the Hummer over <laughs> I was trying a uh, quick Jeff special with the Voron just because I obviously Got it down there when I was flipping the Navistar. Don't remember me, tree? That's what I like about the old Jeff special speed boost. <laughs> All these trees are going to die. And uh, yeah, it flies. It flies pretty nice when you go off the cliff. The Lodestar as well, that flies really nice. But the Lodestar doesn't swim. This thing does, so <laughs> you could fly like that and then just swim to the other island, which is pretty nice. The nose soon bobs up, call comes in, seeing if the old emergency tuna can handle it. I like how it drifts, like, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this truck. So, yeah, I didn't have time to crane a loaf, but that's why you catch a loaf, and we're off on a rescue mission. Oh, fuck you, fuel trailer. I've got a roof racked loaf. I mean, look at him. He's even stood up on the roof so he can spot them good driving lines. So like left a bit, right a bit. He knows what he's doing. Jesus Christ, Loaf, put your seatbelt on, man. How many times have I got to tell you? So I stick his seatbelt on because I knew things might get a bit leery. High range? Yes. I mean, look at it. What a professional you get back in there, Loaf. Job's not done. Nope. I think it just stubbed its dick on the sideboard. That's important. Need to know information. A lot of people don't want to talk about it, but I'm prepared to. 
I mean, if you're hung like a loaf, you're probably going to stub your cock on something eventually. It's just hazards of the job. I mean, he's not called a horse of a vehicle for nothing. So anyway, uh, yeah, I've been loving it with these pair, tuna and loaf. Obviously, I'm still loving the dolphin, but I paid 260 grand for this now, so I'm getting my goddamn use out of it. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon.